Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how to use the draft polar array and the part design polar pattern feature. And I'm sorry in advance, I'm going to say that wrong a number of times. I just can't get, I, I like to say polar array. So I apologize in advance. So let's start out by looking at, um, let's close my bike model. So this, this all arose out of the bike model, uh, just playing one day and making that. And I decided, you know, this, this is good fodder for polar arrays. So I'm going to close the bike. We're going to focus on the gear ring first. And we're going to, because that's, uh, that's good for a part design um, piece of the tutorial. And then we'll move on to the bike wheel. So let's close that and open this. So I'm going to do the gear ring in two steps. I'm going to do a part design version and then I'm going to do a uh, draft version. And the draft, the draft version will be based on the sketches from the part design workbench, but they don't have to be. You could do those in draft as well. Um, sketch is just a little bit easier to work with. So let's start out with by hiding this final product here and let's look at the gear tooth to start with. So I have a single tooth um, for, for my gear ring out of 40. So there's going to be a 40 tooth gear ring and I don't, didn't use actual measurements. So this is sort of a guest, a guest gear, um, uh, ring gear or so let's take a first look at the sketch that made this. So it's very simple. Um, I offset the, all the radiuses from the center of where the gear ring will be. And then I just make the part of a tooth that needs to be repeated. So these circles represent where the roller chain would land. And this is, I guess, the addendum piece. I'm not sure if that's the right name. But I didn't do anything fancy. I just did straight lines with, without the addendum curve, I guess. So that's my sketch, and I'll be padding that to make that piece. So here we have the sketch padded as the single tooth, and we'll be using the part pattern feature. Did I get that right? Polar pattern feature. Oh, I'll never get that right. But anyway, so we're going to select the pad, and we're going to select the feature feature. And this is something that you'll you'll run into a lot. I always forget to do this. You have to have an active body because you're working in part design with one contiguous piece. Piece. So to do that, you either right click the body and toggle the active body. So this is a, and also this is a, uh, a 017 um, feature. This isn't found in 016. And you can see that it's selected by the fact that it's highlighted. Um, there's discussion about this in the forums and my vote would be in a big green arrow next to it. But whatever they do, I'm sure would be pretty cool. So let's select the pad in the gear tooth and let's do the feature. Now at first you'll see nothing happens or it seems like nothing happens, but you have a red object indicating that this piece does not intersect with that. And remember in part design, we're creating a single contiguous object and this is not contiguous. So we're going to change this to 40 and you'll see how slow my computer is by the, how long it takes to update this and why I prefer the draft pol uh, polar array. Uh, because it operates m uh, much more quickly. So after that's finished, um, we'll have a ring of 40 teeth, and then I'll be adding the flange in the middle. So my polar pattern is finished, and before I add the flange in the middle, I'm going right, uh, to click on the polar pattern, and I'm going to click Refine This to True. And basically, it turns these individual shapes into one contiguous shape. Basically, it just gets rid of these intersections. Um, and then we're going to move on to the flange, and we're going to do a polar pattern feature with that. So that now that the uh, teeth of the gear ring are done, I'm going to work on the mounting flange. And you'll see the sketch here is uh, not visible. Let's make it visible, sorry. It's a very simple one. It's just an object that spans 90 degrees. Uh, it's shared the outer radius of this object is the same as the inner radius of the of the gear of uh, the teeth ring so that it will mesh um, in the end. And then I'm just going to repeat this four times around the circumference here. So let's close this sketch and let's uh, look at the pad. So there's our resulting pad. So we'll just take that and we'll do the polar pattern feature. Again, you need to do select the active body. So right click toggle or double click will do it. I'm going to select the pad again by clicking on it. And you'll see I get the red indicator showing me I'm non-contiguous. So let's add two more so it goes all the way around. So now I've got a successful polar pattern. I'm going to click OK. 
And the final thing I'm going to do for that is refine it like before. And that gives us our two semi finalized objects. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a union of these two. So to finalize the part design workbench version of this, uh, first let's get rid of these lines by doing refine. And then we're just going to do a simple union on these two bodies. Now it would have probably been better for me to do this as one part and have the flange as a, you know, as a feature of this body. But if I, but I can also accomplish a single singular part by uh, using the union. So let's make this guy active here. And now let's select both bodies and do the Boolean operation. And in our case, we're going to use fuse because we don't want to cut or common. We want fuse. They're already selected, so I don't have to do anything here. It'd be nice to see some kind of indicator, but, and I click OK, and that finalizes it. Now, I couldn't find um, a way in the part design workbench to refine the shape to get rid of this line. Uh, you, you might be able to do that with part, but that's going to create an object outside of your body, so I'm just going to leave that for now. And I'm going to move on, move over to do my, to do my uh, draft version of this, of this gear ring. So to do the draft version, what I did was, and I'll just, I'm going to create a whole new one. So let's move this guy out of the way. So we'll move him way over. Um, so we're going to do a draft version. It's going to look like this, look like this one here. And the way I did this was to cheat a little bit. Instead of drawing it in draft, I used the pads uh, from my, from my gear ring. And I just did um, draft clones of those. So let me go into draft. So I'm going to do a uh, clone of that. So basically I'm using, using the, the substructures from the part design just to kind of move this along. And then from within the, the gear tooth, I'm going to use um, this pad here. So I have my two basic shapes and now I'm going to do the rest in the draft workbench. So let's move this to the center here. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll do a polar array of the tooth. So in the draft workbench, you have the polar array tool here. And of course, you know, with all, as, as is true with all of them, they're all available in the toolbar. So you see the array is right there. So we're going to use this. Um, and right away, it creates an array, but it's a rectangular array. So we need to change it to from ortho to polar. And then we need to go down to polar here and make this 40. And we can ignore these two here. Uh, because it's polar. They're only used when it's rectangular. And you see how quickly that made the array. Um, the next thing I want to do with this is to change it from false fuse to true. And that will get rid of these lines for us once it's finished calculating. And there's those lines are gone. So now we're going to do the same thing for the, um, the mounting flange. And we'll do the same thing in array. And we'll set the fuse to true from right, right from the beginning. We'll set this to polar. And we'll set this to four. And you see this draws even faster because it's more simple. And then to finalize this, to get rid of the ring, we can just take uh, both arrays and we'll go into the part design work or part workbench, sorry. So part is for basically assembling parts is in my way of thinking it. And part design is for making a part. So we're going to run a Boolean operation with the one selected. And I'm just going to leave everything as is because we're going to do a union or fuse or what's the other name they use so there's three different names for it so let's close that so we got our we got and I, so that's that's our new fusion um so let's revi refine the fusion and that should get rid of our center line here and that's it we're all done so that's how you can use the the two polar arrays the part uh part design polar pattern feature and the draft array uh, using the polar option. So the next thing we're gonna do is look at the draft array uh, for my spoke to tires. So that's it for today's video. In my next video, I'm gonna be using the draft array tool, uh, this guy over here, to assemble my bike wheel. Now, previously I, I had tried this and didn't like it, but I think in this, uh, in this model here, I came up with a methodology that I like and just to give you kind of a preview, it's a bunch of arrays that are mirrored and cloned and whatnot. So it makes it made it really easy to come up with, uh, you know, what I consider a fairly complicated pattern and, and make it realistic.
you, you know, see, you see they're all in the correct positions and whatnot, oh, except that one right there, they're too low. At any rate, that'll be my next video. And if you like my videos, make sure you subscribe, you click like whenever you like it and you share it whenever you find something useful. Uh, make sure you have a great day and I'll see you in the next